Let's talk layers. I don't know about you, but I really can't imagine a program like Photoshop Elements not having multiple layers. I can't imagine not having multiple undos, all those things that make life just a little bit easier for us. But I do remember Photoshop many years ago. The first two or three versions of Photoshop that came out only had one canvas to work on, and they only had one undo. So we were very careful on how we worked. I am in the organizer, and I am in Chapter 9 that we just loaded. So I'll tell you what, come up to this one and load that one in Photoshop Elements. I'm going to right-click on it and come down here. This is Andy's world. In Andy's world or solar system, I only want three planets. The one I live on, Earth, Mars, because I plan to go there someday, and Saturn, because it's got really cool rings. Now, if I take my cursor, I've got the Move tool selected over here, and down here on my Options, I have everything over here selected. Auto Select, Bounding Box, Highlight. If I roll over one, it highlights it. Now, the only reason it's highlighting it is because it's in a separate layer. Each one of these items are in a separate layer. If I click on one, I can select it, I can move it, and again, the only reason I'm able to do that is because it's in a separate layer. So in the expert mode where we are, I'm going to come down here and click this button for layers, if you don't already have that open. And you can indeed see we have a whole bunch of layers over here. You can have, in practical purposes, as many layers as you want. Okay, I doubt if you're going to run out of layers. But there are different types of layers, aren't there? For example, there is something called a background. Now, the background isn't technically a layer. It's actually an element within the Layers panel. But the next lesson, we're going to devote just to the background. So we'll talk about that one in a bit. These up here are layers, but there are different kinds of layers. This one is just like a piece of transparent acetate. I can turn it on and off over here. I think most of you know that. This one up here has actually something called a layer mask, which I absolutely love, layer masks. And we've talked about those already. But the idea is it's non-destructive editing. These are regular layers up here again. This one's a type layer or text layer. And basically, all it does is hold text. You can have adjustment layers. There are different kinds of layers that we work with. One of the advantages is you can move things around. If you've got problems, you can get rid of it. It's not all one big canvas that you're working on. Number two, there's a stacking order. In other words, one item might be above another, like Mars right here is above the line right here. Earth is above that line in the stacking order. So you can change the stacking order. You can lock layers for a variety of reasons. You have a lot of control over what's going on here. Now, to make a new layer, what you do is you basically click this button right here. And boom, you got a new layer. But let me show you a trick here. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that you want a new layer but you want the new layer underneath Andy's world, which is my type layer. Well, you'd say, well, okay, click here, and then go ahead and click up here, and, well, you'd be right. You would make a new layer above the selected layer. But here's a trick. What if you only have one layer, and you want that one layer underneath the only layer that you have? So you come over here, you select it, you click New, and you drag it down, yes? I mean, it's no big deal. It takes you about two seconds, but, you know, you did it. Let me go ahead and undo that. Here's a trick. If when you're making a new layer, you realize the one you want should be below the one you have selected, hold down the Command key, and that's the Control key in Windows Command on a Mac, and then click this button. And it will put it underneath. That's kind of a neat trick. Let me go ahead and get rid of it. The Show Hide button, of course, allows me to turn things on and off. But if you want to just work, say, on, oh, the type up here, Andy's World. And that's all you want to work on. You don't want to work on anything else. So you come over here. You don't want distractions, so you turn everything off by clicking these buttons. Well, here's a trick. Hold down the Alt key. That's the Alt key in Windows Option key on a Mac. And click the Show Hide button. And what it does is it automatically turns off everything. I don't care if you've got 1,000 layers. It turns off everything for you so you're not distracted. And you can Alt click again to turn everything back on again. Now, this one up here, I believe, is one of the layers that I made. So I'm going to delete that one by pressing the Delete key on a Macintosh and the Backspace key in Windows. So we've got layers. We've got a lot of things we're going to talk about in this chapter. Let's talk a little bit more about the buttons up here. Now, if you're coming to me from Photoshop Elements 11, 
there's not really much of a change in the layers panel. But if you're coming to me from version 10 and leaping over 11 to get to 12, then you'll notice that these buttons have changed positions. They're up here. Now that's the new button. We know what that does. It makes a new document. This button right here is for adjustments and we can do things like levels and these are non-destructive adjustment layers. This button here is for creating what you see here, that mask, and we will talk about these things. This button locks the layer. Now it locks all the pixels. So if we come down here and select sun and then click the lock button up here, basically I can't move that anymore. Now what purpose does that serve? Well, it serves a very good purpose because you know you've got this where you want it to be. You don't want to change it. You're in control of everything. And now that you've got it where you want it to be, you want to lock it so nothing happens to it. Now you can still delete it, but you can't move it or change it at all. That's locking. Now you have another button over here, which is lock the transparent pixels, which is actually kind of nice. For example, let's go ahead and keep on the sun right here. If I come over here, nothing's on up here, got everything off. And I come over and pick up my paintbrush tool. And I think you'll know what's going to happen if I paint. What's going to let me paint anywhere I want to? Now, the reason it's not painting the Earth or Saturn, don't forget, is they are in separate layers. We're only painting on that one layer. Let me press undo. Let's say for the sake of argument that you want to change the sun. You want to paint it. You want to do something to it. But it's a very kind of like distinct area inside a layer surrounded by transparent pixels. If I come over here, select that layer again, and then click this button, when I come over here to paint, you can see nothing's going to happen unless there are some pixels within the layer that already have paint in them. You're locking out the transparent pixels. That's actually a really nice one to know you've got. You've got a delete button over here, but you can just press the delete key on your keyboard if you want to do that. And you do have more options right here. Now, new layer, duplicate, delete layer, a lot of these things we can do without coming here. You've got one called Simplify. Let me talk about that one. The Simplify option converts vector to raster. For example, up here, the only layer that's vector is Andy's world, the text. Everything else is paint. It's pixels. So if I go to another layer and come up here, you'll notice it's grayed out. So we do have the option of changing Andy's world. I come up here. I click here. I go down to Simplify the layer doesn't really look like anything has changed, but it has changed considerably. That's now pixels. It's paint. So if you misspelled it or you don't like the font, that boat sailed unless you want to press undo because basically that now is simply paint just like anything else and it's going to pixelate if you make it bigger. But there are things that you might want to do to it that you can't do to it when it is in the vector state. So if you want to simplify a layer, you can do that too. Tell you what. Let's go ahead and close this out. And we don't obviously have to save anything yet. And let's move on to the next lesson.